do you want to do something and you know you can do it but you're not able to do it for some reason and do you feel this anticipation more and more do you feel this uh, feeling inside you which tells you it should be done now but you're not able to do it is there this feeling inside which tells you you are not operating at your highest potential is there a feeling inside of you which tells you that things will not move the way you expect it if you don't change yourself is there a feeling inside is there is there let me know down in the comments what are you feeling and since when are you feeling because today we are going to discuss a very important transit of mars mars is currently with saturn and i am in drikpanchang.com it says from 15th of march which means almost like <clears throat> around a month back uh, till 23rd of april okay mars is in the sign of kumbarashi which is aquarius and guess who's there in aquarius we all know it right who's there in aquarius now write it down in the comments please let me know and then on 23rd april mars will be moving into the sign of mean rashi which is pisces till first of june okay so for five weeks mars will be in pisces and guess who's there in pisces write down in the comments <laughs> so write down three things what are you feeling since when and who's there in aquarius and you can also write who's there in pisces one two three four let me see who writes it the uh, in the earliest all right i will i will send a heart sign to that comment <laughs> All right, so what is this <clears throat> conjunction? So currently, as you know, Mars and Saturn are in the sign of Aquarius. Now, what is the sign of Aquarius? Aquarius is the sign which tells you that you need to learn to give. You need to learn to share. That is why it's the Mool Tricorn sign of Saturn. Saturn represents about uh, things related to service, okay? <laughs> Capricorn is literally the service that you do for anything or for anyone. But Aquarius represents the service that you give to others explicitly. Okay. And because it is the 11th house of gains, 11th sign. So it also represents that you give something and people give you back. And that is why it is also the house of gains. The thing that you get by giving is much more than the giving. Okay. So therefore... If Mars and Saturn come into the sign of Aquarius, there could be uh, this tusk <coughs> regard, in regards to you know how much do you give and how much do you get in return. Now, Mars has already surpassed Saturn around a week back, I think so. And uh, it has separated. Okay, so now Mars is moving way, 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 way ahead. But Mars from 23rd, will be entering the sign of Pisces and where Pisces uh, we know Rahu is there right so Pisces is a very 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 interesting sign because the sign of Pisces actually tells you that you need to learn to give up give up not in a mundane sense you know like just give up things you know uh, not in that way but uh, it surely tells you that you need to learn to let go of certain things <laughs> now if you see Mars and Rahu, these are very contradictory things for both of these planets because both the planets, like one planet, Mars represents anger, passion, you know, aggression and all this, which means becoming obsessed with doing something, achieving results. And then what does Rahu represent? Rahu represents obsession itself, the ability to not focus on one thing because you are too distracted. Okay. So therefore, if these two planets come in the sign of Pisces, what happens? It's like a situation where you may realize things are not in your control. You have to learn to let go of certain things. Now, Virgo is the sign where you plan and Pisces is the sign where you learn to know that your planning is not just sufficient. Okay, you need to, you need to understand there is law of karma, then God is there in control and whatever your karma is according to that you will face circumstances and situations okay so and with god's desire of course so therefore when these two planets come together as you have already seen even though they have not yet come together 
uh, you have already seen you know iran has attacked israel and uh, things are you know boiling you know the oil prices people are fearing they may shoot up you know gold has already uh, you know shooten up very much you know and and if you see uh, for india also as i have you know uh, mentioned in one of my community posts from 13th april to 25th of june is not the best period for india there could be you know some uh, violence in the elections and you know some law and order difficulties or international condemnation and all this so <clears throat> so you need to understand uh, what is this transit okay now why does why why does it happen when mars rahu gets together there is violence why well in the classics there is a lot of mention about this yoga with you know mars rahu or mars saturn also but specifically for mars and rahu you know it it's like saying uh, there are two planets which want everything in life and then they are in a sign which says you, you can you cannot have everything or maybe you can have nothing <laughs> it's like saying you have a desire to conquer the whole world and then you know imagine pisces is the sage rishi comes and tells you hey you can't have anything your own body is not yours you rascal you idiot you thug you want to conquer the whole world even this same freaking body you will leave one day you will lose your own body your teeth your eyes your tongue your nose everything your hands legs everything will perish one day and you fool you are wanting to conquer the whole world so this is not a very good proposition but then mars rahu doesn't care right they say no no i i i want this i want this by any means without any compromise so if mars and rahu come together then you will always see that there is a need to understand why at all are you desiring something why in the universe do you think that getting that will make you happy and this will specifically depend on the houses that mars rules so depending on your ascendant your lagna your rising sign your ascendant first house wherever there is scorpio and aries those two houses as you know are ruled by mars lorded by mars so those houses will undergo this flavor so for example if you are a cancer lagna then you know mars is your 10th lord so something related to the profession could be Uh, could could be going on where you may feel oh you know i need to get this done you know i have this targets and i and there are certain situations which will make you feel uh, helpless and out of control which means you know maybe you are a manager and you have delegated some task to some of your subordinates and then they have not done it or they can't do it or you can't do anything all right so so therefore when this transit uh starts to occur and as you have might have seen i've named this video you know mars saturn rahu conjunction right so even now this transit is going on okay so with saturn what happens is you try very hard but then there are restrictions okay but with pisces the challenge is sometimes nothing works because pisces is the 12th sign of letting go of things okay so if you if you want to be happy during this transit <clears throat> you have to understand that you need to execute your plans don't be foolish and not uh, do do just nothing okay don't don't be that fool who does not plan or execute but at the end if things do not turn out in your favor don't curse yourself don't curse god don't curse people around you don't curse society don't curse the government okay now of course if somebody is doing some nonsense you can um, constructively criticize them and that's fine nothing wrong with it but understand that this transit will be a test of your patience okay so <clears throat> if you feel that there is some work which you will do from 23rd of april to 1st of june which means you know the entire may and the last week of june uh, of april then you need to have a backup plan so for example if you have a deadline somewhere you know around 15th or 20th of may then it might happen that you know you might have to extend that a bit okay so if you are about to commit something to somebody during this period then please make sure that you do proper cost estimation you know risk risk assessment you know fault tolerance and all this okay so be very careful before you commit 
to something or to somebody. So now, if there's any task which should be achieved before 1st of June, then you need to under promise and over deliver. Do not over promise and under deliver because that person who you are over promising and under delivering is also going to be affected by this transit. And that person is also, you know, magnifying things in their head and thinking, you know, oh, I'll get everything or maybe I get nothing. Okay. So please make sure you have a, you, you have some edge, you know, that Delta should be there. Okay. Otherwise uh, you can run into troubles. Okay. And from a geopolitical perspective, uh, the situation will remain very tense till 1st of June and maybe even till after some time also. There could be situation where there is, you know, escalation or something like that. God forbid, I, I, I pray that whatever I am saying becomes false. <laughs> and even for India, like, you know, 13 June to 25th, uh, sorry, 13 April to 25th of June is not the best period. But again, I pray that whatever I am saying becomes false. <laughs> okay. I hope and I pray to God that nothing disastrous happens. You know, of course, some mishaps will always be there in the material world. You can't like, you know, no, dismiss them. Okay. But there should be no major, major clashes. Okay. There should be no, there should not be, you know, some disastrous news. In fact, today also I saw, you know, that uh, in the Russia-Ukraine war, I saw some news you know, like three, 900 Ukrainians are dead. You know, like recently Russia did some attack. You know, I, I don't know about the details, but these are just the headlines. Okay. So therefore, uh, as I said in my post regarding to uh, India's volatile period, take necessary precautions uh, and be aware. So this, 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 this transit should be approached in two ways. So externally, you need to take the precautions and commit less and deliver more okay that's your external approach and internally you should be in that mood of humility where you understand that everything may not work out and you need to learn to let go you need to learn to drink the poison uh, because Pisces teaches you detachment okay so uh, Mars Rahu you know it's like a very 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 powerful conjunction so on the positive side it is very powerful if you want to do something, okay, so there is no doubt on it. If you want to do something, then go and implement it. You will be successful. There's no doubt on it, 100%. But in case you are not successful, okay, if your dashas are not very positive, then you may experience complete failure or backlog, okay. So you should take this as an inspiration to move ahead in life, do something, but without getting obsessed about the results, okay? So there should be no compromise from your side when it comes to putting efforts, okay? So put efforts and understand that depending on my destiny, it will be either fulfilled to some extent or not at all, or maybe it goes the other way around. <laughs> so because I'm making this video, don't shy away from, you know, like uh, making some necessary changes or, you know, don't shy away from, or making serious decisions okay so do that and you will still be benefited all right thank you so much for your patience and my good wishes to everyone may peace tranquility and happiness and <clears throat> brotherhood prevail may people become more spiritual and more detached with their outcomes and you know their external situations that is my prayer to lord Sri Ram. and um as maybe uh, you are seeing this recording tomorrow uh, 17th um, will be the most auspicious occasion of Ram Naomi and my greetings to all my Sanatani brothers and uh, sisters and everyone in this world for Ram Naomi and may Lord Ram bless everyone materially, spiritually and the entire universe. Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Hanuman, Jai Lakshman, Jai Sita Devi, Jai Bharat Maharaj, Jai Ramayan, Jai Valmiki Muni. Thank you so much.